welcome back to Build Tune Race and another big day. Lots of big days recently. We got a new transmission here for Salty. So I am super stoked about this. We also got a special package from Circle D as well. We're gonna open that thing up and check it out. But actually today we've been working on a bunch of little stuff. Trevor came down, he usually runs uh, you know, race week and stuff. He's been helping with putting the EGTs on the headers here. So he's already got this side done. We'll show you guys kind of on that side the process that we went through to get this side done. We're all learning here. This was our first time doing EGTs, but uh, kind of got it lined up and it came out really sweet. He even welded them all on there for us and looking, looking real nice. Um, like in the other video, Ray was over here helping us with the brake lines and all that type of stuff. So we're just, it's getting to the point where it's some big stuff, but a lot of little things, but it's also nice because you get like seven things done in one day. So it's pretty sweet. So let's go ahead and get this thing opened up. Oh, so I'm not going to lie to you guys. I actually already opened this thing up to look inside. So uh, pretty sweet. It comes in this little box. It's got a little dyno, dyno sheet here and a whole lot of foam to keep it nice and safe. So. I'm gonna see if Alex will help me lift this thing out of here. Show you guys what we got. Maybe, sorta. Yep, don't need that. So let's go, let's slide this back. So. Ready? Oh, yep, there it is. All the foam. So what we have here is a TCI Pro X Turbo 400. What this is, is a 210 first gear with a 140 second. I got hooked up with them at PRI and talked to them, was working, trying to decide what transmission to go with and everything. Talked to them about this thing. And he goes, actually, we have one of those in stock. So in a, in a world of 10 to 12 week lead times for a transmission, had one in stock ready to go. The only little thing about this is that it is a stock case and to go in the Camaro and to fit all the NHRA rules and all that type of stuff, is I needed a bell housing. So I went ahead and picked up a JW bell. So we are actually gonna take cutoff wheel and a sawzall to this thing and start cutting on my brand new transmission, which is insane, but for safety on all of those things, that's what we gotta do. This is all the dyno sheet. It gives you all the information and ratios and everything in the gears. And then this is like a, uh, I mean, this is pretty much top of the line, bad to the bone, turbo 400. So all the nice gear sets, all the hardened input and output shafts all the good stuff, pro brake, all of that. It actually even comes plumbed with the um, overfill tank and everything already on it. So super, super nice, deep cast pan and uh, pretty much ready to go. It does have the HD case. So this would be fine if you could put this thing in a car where you could actually fit the big like covers over this. And I thought about putting a carbon shield on it like what's in the Camaro, but those are kind of hard to get. I figured, you know what? Probably best just order the transmission, put a JW bell on this thing. And then I also bought a blanket, which I really like the blankets since blowing up the power glide in Bernie and seeing how well that blanket held everything in. Uh, I have pretty good faith in those things nowadays. So yeah, this is super exciting. And we built the car around the Turbo 400. And now we just need to take and cut this brand new transmission with saws off with the bell on it and then we pull the mock-up transmission out and get this thing put in and then another piece i am super super excited about is the circle d converter we got the one for bernie and man were we impressed with how nice it was it works insanely good the guys there are awesome shout out to dan from circle d because uh he helped me kind of spec this thing out and figure it out and i gave him all the information on the car the transmission all that stuff so i had to have the transmission figured out sent them all the information he said, this is what you need. So there's a ton of guys right now going extremely fast with this thing. So let's open it up and check it out. Oh, I'm so excited. As always, their packaging is super nice. And here it is, boys. Woo yes, sir. So this is a 252 bolt together torque converter so now we can pull the converter part make converter changes if we want on the fly wherever we're at other than we got to pull the transmission out not the funnest deal but way easier than sending this thing all the way back and then getting it back and have to put it back in the car so super super nice let's go ahead and get this thing out because i know the back half of this thing is even nicer than the front oh yeah that's that's the stuff right there boys Ooh. the bottom part of the bolt together is all billet and then the front half is like a stock style kind of 
case up here and then machined um, with the billet and welded on. So, guys, this is this is so nice. So one thing I'm trying to figure out is I figured it was going to come with the trans brake solenoid and it didn't. So I'm just double checking that everything's right with the trans brake. Um, we did get what we thought we got. Just just double checking because uh, yeah, maybe I just need to order a solenoid for this thing. So so no no big deal. But thought I'd have it. Trevor is working on drilling the holes there for um, for our bungs. You just drill those out a little bit bigger, and then with the Holly kit, it comes with these little deals, and then that little piece sits down in there, and then you got the little nut that clamps onto the EGT. So nice little kit makes it pretty easy to install. Well, Trevor was actually looking online, and he was like, "Well, maybe it's an internal trans brake." I was like, "Oh, maybe. I guess that is possible." And bam! Peeled the pan off real quick to look at it, and there it is. So, check out how badass this is, though. All the billet valve body and everything in here. This is this is super super nice. So, pretty pretty cool stuff, and learned something new today. So, actually, that as he was looking, that gets wired over to what were you saying comes out of the like your reverse lights or something on that the factory would be one? Or your kick down. Or your kick down or something. So, actually, the trans brake gets wired over to here, and then so all it just one wire hookup for your trans brake. Super simple, super easy, and uh, now we know what the inside of the tranny looks like, and hopefully we don't have to look at this for a long, long time. 5.30, but... Looking pretty good. Let's see how straight he is. Close enough. Close it's getting there. Let's <laughs> just put a little tacks. I'm going to try to keep everything nice and straight. Looking, looking pretty gosh dang decent. Alrighty, so looking at this thing, you have this little lip. This bolts to the pump. Then you have a little bit of like an air gap here that you'll want between it so this doesn't necessarily hit the case. So I pretty much just need to cut the bell just past like almost what's even with the pump because then if it's flat even with the pump then this bolts to the pump then I got that distance that will carry the gap all the way up through there. So about a quarter inch past this line I will cut just in front of that and then if I need to I can sand back but I think we'll be fairly close but definitely don't want to get back into the pump either, so got to kind of be careful. So I want to be just about a quarter inch on this side of that. How are we looking? All good. It's done. All done. A little toasty still. Another four EGTs installed. So then we just got to kind of figure out what we're going to do with the um, the height, the height of, the of it and stuff when we go to install it. So not too big of a deal, but I think that more or less means these are all done, except for just a little weld up here. But uh, headers are header slash hot side. Yeah, it's a, almost there. <laughs> almost there. All right, so before we get cutting on the transmission, we actually received the rear wheel. So I'm still waiting on the front while Trevor is here and he's had some experience with beadlocks. I've done one or two sets, but not very many. Uh, he's actually said, I'll help you throw the tires on if you want. So he brought his torque wrench and we're going to get the 275 Pros mounted up on the beadlocks, or at least get started on it. So I'm gonna open these up and show you what we got. So I'm super excited about this deal. Uh, it's been a long time coming to actually get a nice set of wheels for the back of Salty. Well, for all the way around, but um, these ones are a little extra special. So I'll show you what we got here. So I ended up going with the RC Components Retros and a double beadlock. So these are super sick. Went polished. Originally, I want to put gold wheels on the car, but that's like a whole other step getting them done. And I just want to get some wheels here. And I, I with the kind of the billet elbow and everything, kind of going with the polished silver look. Some people are like, oh, what about like the machine black? What I didn't like about this car before is that it had the gunmetal wheels on it. And like for thumbnails on YouTube and all that type of stuff, they just went away. They were hidden. So these are definitely going to stand out and be uh, nice and be able to see them real easy. So these are 15 by 10 with a four and a half inch backspace, which hopefully fits the new rear end that we had made. So there they are. Pretty cool. It's a, a multi-piece design, so the center bolts in, then you have the outer, and then you have both your rings on here. What's the first thing you do when you get new wheels? Put them on, make sure everything fits the way you thought, and man, I think that looks pretty gosh dang cool. So really sick. So it's just inside, which the tire always bows out a little bit. But uh, so this is a 15 by 10 with a 475 backspace. So we had the rear end shortened three inches per side to make this work. Something I did not understand when I first built the car. Otherwise I would have went away from the seven and a half inch backspace originally. 
But uh, I mean, it worked great as it was, but you cannot run a double beadlock as a seven and a half inch backspace, but you can with a four and a half inch. So here we are. Feel right at all. <laughs> Feel so wrong. Don't worry, cut not yet. Well, right, guys, first cut. It's happening. So, we're doing all right. If you haven't, uh, so I'll show you guys kind of. That's where I made my first cut, just out in front of the casting line, and then that's where it's coming through right there. So then, uh. I think I'm still plenty good because really I could be almost flush with the pump. So still got plenty of room. Just gonna keep on cutting. So making some progress on here. The only part is this pan is a little thick. So I think I'm actually gonna have to even trim a little bit of the pan down here to get there, but uh, it's coming along. And the guys, you guys are over here. Making some progress on the bead lots, huh? About oh yeah. 97 times around the world. And yep. So what do you end up torquing these down to? Uh, 20 foot pounds. On the final? Yes. And then so what are you doing? Like three three rounds or yep, your way? So up? I'm doing five, fifteen, and then twenty. Nice. Cool. Hell yeah. So the four inch cutoff will work good getting all the way to about right here. Grab the hacksaw and then I ended up just go ahead and cutting straight down from the outside, about like so. And then it released it. So now we're we're halfway released with the bell there. You guys can see that, so. Not uh, bad, came in nice and flush here. Like I said, I think I'm still gonna have to cut some of this off, but at least I'm off of there. I come with the sander and sand onto the pan there. But I'm uh, gonna turn it over, keep cutting there, and then do the same on that side. And then at least we'll get rid of this main piece, and then I can start using a flap disc to kind of smooth it out. It'll take me a little bit, but it, it's coming, so. Uh, it's not how it showed up in the box. It's a little, a little different, a little lighter now. About to make it a little bit heavier though. I've never felt so wrong cutting on something in my life, but uh, it'll be worth it. Yeah, that looks great. A little tire shine, it'll be doing wonderful. Pretty easy, not bad. Not too bad. Lots of, lots of clicking. Yes. <laughs> Sick. So and now. We got both of them done, so just need to add some air and then get them mocked up in there once we get the brakes on the rear all finished up. But uh, otherwise, they're looking freaking killer. Thanks, dude, for coming down. Appreciate you. No problem, man. We knocked out a bunch of stuff today, so he's actually going to leave. I'm going to show you guys his truck as he pulls out. It's pretty sweet. It's what year? 68. 68 C10 long bed? Yep. Long bed with a turbo 5.3 in it, so uh, can you pop the hood? Sure. Let's check that thing out. So this is it, and he's actually done a bunch of race week vents, uh, a bunch of years, and he kept tearing up parts. So then he actually built a love, and now he's got a Dakota that unfortunately kind of ran into some stuff, or a back rear end of a trailer last year, and then fixed the truck on the road, went to the track, and ended up running your fastest pass of the week at that point, right? Yeah, yeah so that's pretty crazy. So uh, pretty cool deal, and I mean, just race week, his whole family is like, super hardcore race weekers and pretty much no stop no matter what and gets through it but yeah this thing is sweet man yeah. just dirty old 5.3 with a turbo <laughs> on it <laughs> just daily in the crap out of it huh yep oh so, yeah that's such a sweet daily like just ripping around and he says it's got a built 80 in it heater works great so just daily is the crap out of the thing and and drives the drives the crap out of it. So he just got over breaking parts on race week. So he said, I'm gonna build a race truck and then kind of set this one back to being more of the daily deal. So what turbos on it? Uh, Borg Warner 66. Nice, that's cool, man. So nothing, so it probably comes on decent, huh? Yeah, no, it's really responsive. Up and great for merging. <laughs> great <laughs> the, for it's, merging. it's got the passing power. But like, what a cool sleeper just to like rip around in and 
sure you've caught a few people off guard with this thing. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> right on, man. We'll appreciate you coming down. No problem. Glad we could get some stuff done. Yeah, no, we're making progress, so still got a little ways to go. A little behind schedule, but hey, it's what it is. <laughs> well, got the bell housing pretty much there, other than, as you guys can see, it's still super tight. It, like, almost touches here, so it's probably binding up just a little bit up here. Looks pretty good. And over here, it touches just a little bit and a little bit down there with the oil pan. So really, really close. We're getting close. Alex is pulling the old transmission out. I'm going to keep grinding. So then hopefully we can get this thing in here soon. And there it finally is after taking this thing on and off about 17.5 million times. We finally freaking got it. Alex has been working on getting the rear wheels and tires kind of mounted, getting the rear end down so salty is actually back on some of its own weight. Still got, you know, this thing going on up here, but we're getting dang close and we'll be back tomorrow to put that tranny in. So back at it the next morning, got the converter installed in the transmission. Everything's looking real, real nice with that new SFI bell housing on it. Super sick setup. Super excited to see what this thing does inside the car. But I actually grabbed my little jack. Actually, this morning I ran to Harbor Freight to buy one of the tall ones so I could use it like this and install it at this height and they discontinued the dang transmission lift. So uh, we've done it before, put a transmission on there, raise that up pretty much as high as it can go, and then lower the car down onto it, and then slide under there and kind of push it into place so it's not way high, but it's also not super close to the ground either. We got the new Turbo 400 getting ready to come down. We got to slide it up right there. We already got the uh, cross mount on there too, so that should be good to go. Put a zip tie on the converter and hold it back. I'll end up cutting this one once we get closer to actually setting it against the bell housing on the engine, and then we should be should be all right. Easy does her. Can't take the transmission to the car. Take the car to the transmission, huh? Pump it, pump it, pump it, pump it. Okay. Now should we come up with a jack? Yeah, I can come up with the jack now, but I gotta make sure I'm lined up here pretty well. Oh yeah, keep uh, keep going. Okay, I gotta. Resist. We're close though. Right? Oh, oh. Okay. So. Yep, I'm on. I'm halfway on a pin. Halfway on a pin. Let me get this bolt in here. Okay. That's not too bad. We got at least. Two bolts in the bell housing, everything. We're trying to get one more bolt in the cross member back here, and then it pretty much will be sitting in place. Then we raise it up and get the rest of it bolted together. And here we go. Salty actually has a transmission and an engine now installed, bolted in. We're almost there with the drivetrain. Rear end just needed now major for a drive shaft once we can get the car down at weight. And then we're looking, we're looking pretty gosh dang decent, I think. That'll be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching us cut apart a brand new transmission, throwing a bell on that thing, and getting it installed in Salty. If you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you guys next time.